Well, Dutch is definitely more widely spoken than Flemish. Dutch is spoken in the Netherlands. They have some islands in kind of the South American region. There's Curaçao, Sint Maarten. Those are Dutch possessions. They're part of the Netherlands. And so they speak Dutch there. That's, that's their language. They have their own accents, but it's very understandable. And Flemish is kind of, it's, it's the dialect of the northern half of Belgium. And, you know, the, the Belgians are very, they're very insistent that it's its own language. But if you, if you look at the two, you'll, you'll realize that it's really just a very strong dialect of Dutch. And I think one of the big differences, one that makes it hard sometimes for people to understand is that in Dutch, you have a very guttural G sound. It's kind of a G sound. It sounds like you're clearing your throat. And in Flemish, you have kind of a yeah. It's very soft, kind of a hissing sound. And if you're used to one and you hear the other one, it can really throw you off. There's one common phrase is saying good morning. It's goede dag or goede morgen. That's the way a Dutch person would say it. A Belgian would say goede morgen or goede dag. And that's that's very different when you're used to one of them. If you've heard them both, you can you can you can tell. But going from one to the other is sometimes a hard switch. And then in Dutch, you could say, there's a word, geweldig, that's wonderful or awesome. And that W is pronounced as a V, but a Belgian pronounces it like a W. So where a Dutch person says geweldig, a Belgian says geweldig. And it, 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 you almost start laughing when you hear a Belgian talk for the first time because it's, it sounds so different. It sounds like they don't actually know how to speak Dutch. And, but then you realize there's actually a whole different set of rules in play for some things. They have different words they use, for example. In, in Dutch, there you would say, you call someone a jonge, just like a guy, like, hey, jonge. And this is like, hey, how you doing, man? But in Belgium, in Flemish, you would say Monica. And it's their diminutive for little guy. Hey, Monica. There's that, there's that famous statue in Brussels that's called Monica Piss. And that's the Dutch name. It means little boy peeing. But it's in Flemish. And that's kind of this kind of interesting differences. There are a couple of words they use that are different and kind of it's almost the way they state things. That that Dutch people are a little more okay with leaving a couple of verbs out that are implied. It's for example, you could say the car has been washed. It's the auto is gewassen geworden. That's the car has has become washed. But a Dutch person would leave out the geworden, the became washed. They're assuming, well, if it is washed, then clearly it got washed. So they, they just leave that word out. But a Belgian doesn't think that's appropriate. They put in every verb, even if it could be left out. And so you'll you'll start to notice that. I know when I was transferred, uh, I spent about seven and a half months in Belgium. My, the first section of my mission was in the Netherlands. After that, I was seven and a half months in Belgium. And my last six weeks was in the Netherlands. And I went to a very Dutch city. I went to Rotterdam. And for the first week, everyone thought I was a Belgian. They heard the accent. They heard the way I spoke. And they could immediately tell. If you're not Belgian, you just came from there, didn't you? I said, well, yes. I said, you talk like a Belgian. Even after my accent had faded, the way I phrased things still indicated I had spent a lot of time in Belgium. And so Dutch people are very good at that. They're, they'll hear the way you pronounce a word and they'll be able to tell you where you just came from. I, are you from The Hague? Or are you from Maastricht or any other city? You know, well, how do you know that? Well, I can hear it in how you talk. The same way we identify a Southern accent or a New York accent. They have the same thing, except for them it's to the city level where they have their own accents. And so they'll be able to tell you where in the country you're from, which is, I don't know, it's, it's honestly kind of cool, you know, to think that, that the reason that exists is because their culture was very much one of staying, one of building something permanent and leaving it behind for your children who would live there, maybe in the same house, certainly in the same city. And so you got these city accents that they have stayed for hundreds, thousands of years. I know there's, I had a friend of mine who recently came home. She served in The Hague as her last area. And I could hear it immediately when she started talking. It's like, your last city was The Hague. I can hear it. And people that talk to me, 
they can hear a Belgian and a Rotterdam's accent kind of mixed up together. And the accents are so distinct that you can tell where missionaries have, have just come from just by listening to them talk. So it's kind of a cool, it's kind of a cool thing to see that little aspect. There's sometimes, it's, I don't know, it's sometimes a reflection of the very regional, uh, kind of regional differences in Dutch and in Flemish. It's all the same language, but people have lived for so long in the same place that they have their own peculiar ways of saying things. I think that, you know, it's, for me personally, it was a, it was a lot of fun to study. I really love the language. And I can say it's definitely worth it to put in the time for language study. Because no language comes on its own, and Dutch is renowned as being a, diffi a difficult language. But for people who are willing to work at it, and for people who trust in the Lord's promise of the gift of tongues, it does come. For me, it was my third area. I was six months, eight months out by the time that I really got to the point where I felt I could speak the language competently. So for me, it took a while. I, I served in the areas with the most difficult accents in the mission. But in many ways, that was a blessing because I had served in those areas where the people were impossible to understand. When I got to the place where they spoke normal Dutch, I could understand them. And I realized, wow, I'm better than I give myself credit for. And so I think that was one thing that was really important for me to understand. That's one thing I also tried to pass on to younger missionaries was don't worry if the language seems hard because it is a hard language, but it's a language that you can learn. It's a language that does come and just give it time. Some missionaries aren't comfortable until they're a whole year out. But those missionaries that sometimes took longer to get comfortable, they sometimes had the best Dutch out of all of us. And I think that's something that missionaries shouldn't lose sight of is that yes, it may seem hard now, but there is a reward at the end and you will get there.